In this short presentation today, I'm going to show you how to make a frequency distribution and a histogram in Excel 2007 for PC. This is Dr. Myers and I'm course lead for Biostatistics NSG322 at National University. So today I'm going to show you these six steps. Basically we're going to start with a data set that I'm going to share with you and then I'm going to show you how to bin the data for our histogram and frequency table and I'm going to show you how to use the data analysis function in the PC. So the data we're using today is from my uh, discussion question one for my class and basically I've made 25 students jump up and down for a minute and we measured their heart rate and that's shown for you here. You can always pause this recording if you need to write down the data to type into Excel to keep up with us. So here we have our 25 data points of our heart rate and I've also gone ahead and typed in the bins that cover our data. So you can see they vary from uh, from the 90s to about into the 150s. So those are basically the range of data we want to graph for our histogram. So Excel does this very easily. You can just click on the data tab as I've outlined for you. Then data analysis. It calls up the tools that we have. Make sure histogram is selected. Click OK. And it brings up the histogram dialog box. Uh, we've seen these before in Excel, but basically you can just drag over the data range. So here's the input range, which is our heart rate data, which we can select with our labels. Then the bin range is the bins that we made for that fit our data, which are here. So you, again, you just drag over them and they get put into the dialog box. You can click on New Worksheet to put it in a new worksheet for the uh, Excel function. And cumulative percentage is going to give us our frequency table and chart output will give us our histogram. So you want to have those clicked. Then you just click OK and we're 80% done. You can see that in a new worksheet that we click on here, it's given us our histogram and we can go ahead and fix that later to make it look better. And it's already given us most of our table frequency table data that we want to have. So we have the frequencies of our bins and we have the cumulative percentages. So if we want to get the frequency percentages, we just have to put in some new columns and then we can write formulas in Excel to finish these off very quickly. So we right click, insert will pull up a new column. We can label that frequency percentage and then we can just write a formula for that. So to give our total which we need to make our percentage because we're going to take the percentage of the whole, right? We can basically make a formula here to give us the sum of that column, which should be 25 since we have 25 subjects. So the formula we type in equals sum, and as you can see as I type, Excel is going to help me, but we can just drag over our frequencies, close the parentheses, click enter, and we have our 25. So for percentage then, it's just going to be part over whole. So again, we make another formula. So equals, this time it's going to be our B2 divided by our sum. And since we want to copy this down, we'll use that dollar sign function. So we'll say B2 divided by dollar sign B dollar sign 10. That's where our sum is. You can see it's already highlighting it. Click enter. And of course, the frequency percent for the first one is going to be zero. We can copy that formula down by using the home key. So we drag over that and fill down, which you should know how to do from Excel. So we fill down and it calculates our frequency percents for us. We can right click on these to reformat them. So we right click, format cells. Percentage is what we want. One decimal place is fine. Click OK. And now we have our percentages. To put in the uh, cumulative frequency, again, we'll right-click and put in another column. We'll call that cumulative frequency. We have the percentage, but to get those, basically, we're going to have our frequency of our first one is zero, and then we can write a formula to just tally up the rest of them. So this will be equal to our first one, D2, plus our next one, which is B3, which would, would be 2. So we'll click OK, and then we can copy that one down as well. And we have our formulas. Now we can just right-click on these because we want these to go back to being numbers. And now we have our frequency table completely done in Excel with our percentages, cumulative frequency, and percents.
In today's lesson, I'm going to continue our discussions about making a frequency distribution in histogram in Excel and for the PC, and we're going to finish up with our histogram today. Again, this is Dr. Myers, and I'm course lead for Biostatistics NSG322 at National University. So if we go back to our Excel spreadsheet where we've created our frequency table and our histogram, we can see now that we can look at the histogram and we can kind of make it more presentable and get more data out of it. So we can resize our histogram. And the first thing we want to do is noted in the slide here for you is to get rid of this cumulative percent on the graph because that's really not part of our histogram. So to do that, we simply select on the or drag over that cumulative percentage, right click, and just say delete series. So when we do that, we have our histogram regenerated. Of course, when we made our frequency table, we had a total column, so we can just delete that from our column for now and restore our histogram. So in our histogram now, we see a nice symmetrical shape to it. It has a center at about 130. And to make it a true histogram, as we noted here on our slide, we want to change this gap width because histograms are, continuous, are for continuous data and really they should have no gaps in between. What we're looking here is really technically a bar graph, but we want to make it a true histogram. So to do that, it's very easy. We simply right click on those bars. Instead of deleting, we're going to go down to Format Data Series, and we're going to take that gap width bar and just move it over to No Gap. Once we do that again, we hit Close, and now our histogram is a true histogram with no, uh, no gaps between the bars for our continuous data. So once we're done that, we can then resize it as much as we want. We can change the axes simply by dragging over them and right-clicking on them. So we can uh, also change the bins and get rid of that because we really want that to be pulse rate. So we could have typed over another title there. Or we can simply go to Layout on our buttons up top, and we can put in data labels or access titles as much as we want. We can also put in a chart title, and we can call this pulse rate after five minutes or one minute, whatever our interval happened to be. So we can put in labels there very easily. Might want to take out the frequency because we have it labeled over here. So you can make any changes you want to make your graph look better. For the axis titles, you can go to the primary uh, vertical axis title and put in rotated title. We can put go back into our horizontal title below the axis, and we can call these pulse rate by just highlighting them. And of course, as you drag over these, you can right click, bold or unbold them, make them a little bit larger so they're more visible and so forth. So you can very easily fix your histogram in Excel and then go to the edge of it, right click and copy, and you can paste that into a Word document and you're all good to go. So again, this is our making histogram video for Excel 2007 on the PC. And this also works in Excel 2010 as well, very similar functions.